What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now, the coffee table is complete. So the oak and metallic copper resin table, it was all finished and it's absolutely stunning. I'm delighted with how this turns out. It's really, really nice. So this is the final episode, guys, where we build the frames. Now in the first episode, we flattened our live edge slab. We built a router slate. In the second episode, we set up our mold and we did a four stage resin pour to achieve this beautiful copper metallic effect with the translucent center that you can see down into. In the previous episode then, we flattened the top again, we re-finished uh, all the resin and put a nice Danish oil finish on the top and got it lovely and polished up. In this episode, we build the frame for it to sit on, so these trapezoidal oak legs with a center brace, so it's all braced up now. So one thing you have to worry about with live edge stuff, especially with all this rot in it, is that the slab will move and twist and bend and it won't stay where you want it. It won't stay nice and flat. So I have an absolutely unique way of mounting the legs, something that I have not seen before, and bracing the top. So we braced the top and mounted the legs all in one, which you'll see in this video. So stay tuned for that. And I also learned how to use a miter saw. So up until this point, I did not know how to use a miter saw. So it was quite hilarious when I found out. And uh, I shared it on Instagram and all my uh, carpenter friends thought it was more then hilarious. So you're gonna see that in this. So if you don't know how to use a miter saw, you're about to find out. And if you do know how to use a miter saw, you're about to have a laugh at my expense. So there we go, guys. Let's crack on and finish this beautiful oak and metallic copper resin table. Let's do it. Okay, guys, we are on to the legs. Now it's gonna be a little bit unorthodox what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna mix in some stuff that I use every day in my job as an electrician. It's uni strut. This, um, you can basically build anything out of. It comes in deep, shallow, slotted, unslotted. I built my lumber storage rack from it. Um, you'd often see this stuff for um, air conditioning guys use it, electricians use it for hanging tray, cable tray, basket, trunking, um, running pipes, duct work, everything for hanging out of. It's kind of like C channel, and most guys would route C channel into the end of their table. But my table, I don't want to route anything into it. It's down below 40 millimeters now, so I think it's down around 38, 36 mil. So I don't want to take any more timber out of it because it has that whole rot center where it's almost hollow the whole way through. So I don't want to route something into it. So I'm going to fix the unistrut to the base of it instead, and then I'm going to route the unistrut into my legs. Now the Unistrut has side walls on it, just like C-channel, so it's extremely rigid and strong and resistant to bending, so that should help um, keep my table nice and flat. And the beauty of Unistrut then is that you can fix things to it. So you have these spring nuts, which you can position anywhere in the Unistrut, and you can bolt anything you want to your Unistrut. You can get 10 mil, 6 mil, 8 mil, 12 mil nuts, any size nut you want you can fit in there, and that's how I'm going to attach my legs. So that's the plan. Like I say, a little bit unorthodox, mixing some of my electrical work with my woodworking stuff, and hopefully this will work. And if it does work, then it's gonna be a good option for a lot more people out there, I think. So the legs themselves, it's gonna be made from oak. I have these pieces machined up already, and we're gonna go with this trapezoidal shape. Now these are two legs together, so I have to split all these in half. So the plan will be, we'll take the top piece of our leg, which I'm gonna split in half here, and we're gonna route the unistrut, sink it into the legs like that. It'll be faced this way. This will be fixed to the table, and our leg then can be screwed to our unistrut, and it'll give us a really, really strong attachment point, and it should also help keep our table flat. So, a bit of an experiment, but if it works, it works. So, uh, yeah, I'll get you in for just a quick closer look at this, and then we'll crack on. Right, guys, so here's a close-up of our legs, and this is just some two-inch oak, which I've already machined up, so I have to split all these guys in half. We're gonna get two sets of legs out of, so I'll sort of move these out of the way. You'll see I have a rigid drawing here. So top of our legs is going to be 500 mil. The side piece here is 389 millimeters and the bottom is 369 millimeters. And that's just made to suit my table. And then I have the angles um, all measured, marked out here. So it was just a case of draw this out. It's always handy to do a rigid drawing. If you want to establish your angles, you can get your center point. You can draw the width of your base, the width of your top, and then you can just line everything up and then you can measure your angles. And these angles come out at this angle here is 80 degrees, this angle here is 100 degrees. So I have cuts of 40 and 50 degree cuts to make in these boards. And we're gonna glue these miter joints together. Now miter joints don't make the strongest glue joints, so we might have to put in some miter splines or miter keys into this. That's the plan, that's what I'm thinking about doing. I might do some walnut keys, just as a nice little design feature. 
but we look at that, we'll get it all made up now. So I'm gonna take these pieces to the bandsaw, I'm gonna split them down the middle, I'm gonna run them back through my thickness, or, or if you're in America, my planer, and just dimension them all up to the exact same size. Take them to the miter saw, cut the angles in them, and then I wanna take the top and route in our uni strut. So let's get on it. Right, there we go, there's our two legs um, all machined up now. So we'll just cut them on the bandsaw, pass them through the thickness or, or the planer, and everything is parallel through, square, ready to go. So I'm just gonna match them to the orthographical drawing here, or the rigid orthographical drawing, I think is what these are called, or rod for short, handy to have, because you can match everything to it. So I'm just gonna rip 40 degrees on all my 40 degree cuts and 50 degrees on all my 50 degree cuts, so I can see uh, exactly what I need to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these to the miter saw now, cut them, and then I'm gonna kind of sneak up on the miter. So I cut them roughly to the correct length. And what I like to do when I do miter cuts like this is to leave them a little bit longer and then shave them off slightly with the miter saw to get that perfect fit. So a lot of chopper on the miter saw, it's just two angles, 40 degrees and 50 degrees, and we shall rock on and do it, so let's do it. Okay, I have my miter saw set to 40 degrees, so the first thing I wanna do is all my 40 degree cuts. So my top has two 40 degree cuts, and my side where they meet the top have 40s on this side. So everything is marked and numbered to go together so that we don't make any mistakes. So let's get chopping. Okay guys, I've made a boo-boo and uh, I thought I was going insane for a second, but something very strange has happened and uh, I've just discovered something about miter saws that I didn't quite understand. Now this is a teachable moment for me and maybe for some of you guys as well, but I'm sure all the chippies watching this channel might understand this, but I certainly didn't. So I've measured my angles here. This is an 80 degree angle, so half that's 40 degrees. I cut my thing at 40 degrees and I end up with a 50 degree cut on my piece of timber. Now 50 degree is what I need for the bottom, so it fits exactly here, but obviously now that's not gonna work here. I have two 40 degree cuts rather than 50 degree cuts. Even though I set my miter saw to 40 degrees, I end up with a 50 degree cut. So I'm actually taking 40 degrees off 90 degrees with the miter saw when you set it to 40 degrees, which I didn't realize. And I'm just gonna show you this now on my miter saw. So maybe some of you guys didn't notice. It's not 45 degrees to the bed or to the fence that you're setting up. It's 40 degrees off the center line. Let me just show you this for a second. Okay, hopefully I have you set up where you can see. So I have my miter saw now set to exactly 40 degrees. And if I put it against the fence, See, that piece of timber fits flushly against the blade, so we look like we're good. But this angle is actually 50 degrees. So let me just show you what it's 40 degrees of. So hopefully I can capture this now. So bring this back to zero degrees. Put this here. It is actually 40 degrees off 90, which leaves you 50 degrees on this side. So if I move this now to 40 degrees, Hold this on the center line and see, hopefully you can see that. It doesn't match up, my arm is in the way, so it's not hitting the blade flushly. But if I move my saw all the way to 50 degrees now, which is right there, sorry if I'm in the way of the camera, and I drop the blade now, you can see that matches perfectly. And this piece of timber is now exactly 90 degrees to my fence. So what I'm actually doing is removing 40 degrees off the cut and leaving myself with 50 degrees. I didn't realize a miter saw works that way. I thought you set it to 40, you chop and you end up with a 40 degree angle. Apparently not. Okay, so that's a bit strange and I didn't realize it. Maybe I'm doing something wrong here. Is there something I'm not doing? You guys are probably screaming at the camera now. But the upshot of that is, I get my protractor and put it on this. I'm left with a 50 degree angle when what I needed was a 40 degree angle. So I set my miter saw to 40 degrees and I'm left with 50. So I took 40 off the 90, which leaves you with 50. Put your two 50 degree angles together and I end up with 
100 degrees, which is what I need for the bottom of my uh, trapezoid, not for the top of my trapezoid. I need that to be in here like this. So this piece is now too short, so I have to go make up another one. These pieces are not too bad. I can just flip these around and put my two 50 degree angles to the bottom. And now I need to cut these at 40, which is actually 50 degrees on the miter saw, which is very strange. And I'm struggling to get my head around uh, what exactly is going on here. So I'm gonna cut all these to the opposite angles to what they need to be to end up with the angles that I need. And uh, yeah, let's get this thing together. Okay guys, there we go. Our two trapezoidal frames are all cut and I figured out how to use my miter saw. After, <laughs> after all these years, I just put it out on Instagram there and a few of my carpenter friends got back to me and they thought it was absolutely hilarious. So yeah, it's, uh, you're measuring off your zero degrees or your 90 degrees. So if you measure 40 degrees, it will leave you with 50 degrees. If you measure 50 degrees, it will leave you with 40 degrees. And I use my miter saw for mostly straight cuts and 45s and 45s at a halfway point. So it never occurred to me that that was the case until I went and did it. So you learn something new every day. But there we go. We have our two frames and are nicely fitting there now, which is absolutely fantastic. I think they're gonna look quite nice. So now, before we glue these up, I need to cut my two pieces of Unistrut. I need to route them into the center of this guy here. And uh, then we can glue these up once that's done. So let's get on it. Okay guys, we're on to the top pieces where we're gonna route in our pieces of Unistrut. So they're gonna sit in just like that. I have two of them cut there now. And I've just built a router jig with a slot in it just to put down over these so I can route out the slot for these. So nice and simple. I'm just gonna use a router bit with a bearing on it that will follow um, the inside of this piece of plywood and should route this out. I've stuck a couple of pieces of double-sided sticky tape to this. So I'll stick the uh, router jig to the top of this piece and then just prop it up either side with two pieces the exact same size. Now, this is the piece that I cut the angles on wrong, but I'm thinking about using this in the middle on the table in between the two legs and putting another one of these into it where I can hide it. So that'll sit under the table again, just to, to brace the table and to help to keep it straight. So I'm thinking about, I might do this. I might just route this out just to have it. And then I can have a look at it later on to see if I'm gonna like it. It'll be hidden under the table. You won't really see it, but it might actually help to keep the table straight. So we might do three of them. But for now, let's get the legs done so we can get this glue together. Guys, there we go, that's the first one done. So it's just gonna be exactly like that. That will fix the bottom of the table. That will sit into the legs. I'll fix my legs to this then, and this hopefully will help keep my table straight. It's fairly thick uh, oak as well, so the oak should act um, to help keep it straight also. So I'm gonna go on and do the rest of these now. And when that's done, I'll get back to you. Okay guys, it is the following day. I've done a bit more work on these legs. So I left you, I had just routed out the Unistrut slot, so that's all done. So I just took it to the pillar drill. I drilled 20 mil holes with Forstner bits and then an eight mil hole in the center of that. That's gonna be my fixing points to fix to my Unistrut. And uh, I might then turn some 20 mil dowels just to cap them off if I feel the need to. So you won't be able to see them anyway under the table, but uh, if we want to blank them off, we can, we have that option. Now, I'm just getting the legs set up here in the jig that I've built. So I'm trying to glue it. I'm having um, a bit of difficulty trying to get these joints to stay together. A biscuit joint or, or maybe a domino would be ideal here now to stop the movement and keep these things together or some dowels, but I don't have any of that equipment. So I'm thinking of using screws. I know it's not the, the ideal thing to do, but they will be hidden and not seen. So I can countersink them into the top. I need to just pull these joints together. The nature of trying to clamp this is that the frame wants to push itself apart. So in order to get tight joints, I'm gonna to need to use some dowels or some screws. I think I'm gonna use some screws. So I'm gonna screw down through the top, countersink them, and I'm gonna countersink them through the bottom. And the bottom holes then I can either plug or I can put on the feet for the table right there, and they won't be seen, they're gonna be hidden anyway. So it's not really a big deal, and it's not really gonna be seen. So in order to get good, strong joints, I'm gonna glue and screw. So let's get on it. Okay, now that I have my uh, holes countersunk and my pilot holes aligned exactly in my joint, I'm just gonna put some glue on it. Get some glue on these joints now. And 
I'm just going to do one side at a time just to make sure I get everything perfectly aligned. looks pretty good. I'm just going to do the rest of them exactly like that. Okay guys, there's one frame complete. So I have two screws in the bottom, two screws in the top. And like I said, I'll be putting some um, little feet on this anyway. So um, that, that will cover those screw holes and the screw holes in the top won't be seen. And if I need to plug them, I can plug them. But I just wanted to make sure that I was going to get some strong joints. Obviously this is for a table for my own house. Um, if I'm going to build any more of these, I might invest in like a domino or a biscuit joint or just to uh, make these joints a little bit easier, but I want them to be good and strong and gluing end grain to end grain is never really a good idea because the glue just disappears into the end grain because it's like straws, it just soaks it up. So you definitely need something with the glue. So uh, I think um, I won't need to put the keys in now. I was thinking about putting some keys in these joints, but I actually like the cleaner look. It's just a straight oak. I think it's going to look nicer under the table to keep it simple. So uh, yeah, I'll do the other frame now exactly like this. And that's the two frames glued and screwed. And then we can finish them when it, the glue sets up. Right guys, there we go. Both table legs are now fully assembled. Just let that glue go up and we we'll a little bit of cleaning up to do on them. Just get those joints looking great. Um, sanding, get them all nice and cleaned up and get a finish on them. Again, not overly happy with using the screws. Um, again, like a domino, a festival domino or a biscuit joint that would be the ideal situation. I don't have either of those tools and I can't justify running, just running out and buying tool, every tool that I need when this is just my hobby. So the screws, I think, are the best option. I wanted to keep clean lines. I wanted modern looking legs. So hand cut joinery mightn't have fitted either. But uh, yeah, I think this is gonna be the best option. Again, you won't see the screws, so there's no real big deal. The next table I built, I wanna do some nice joinery on it, all right. And maybe down the road sometime, I might get myself a biscuit joint or, or even a spring for a festival domino if the budget so allows. But for now, I think that's gonna work quite nice and we have some nice, clean, modern looking legs to sit that coffee table on. So the parts that I need, the inserts there haven't arrived yet. So it's gonna be a couple of days time for, for me It'll be a couple of seconds for you guys so we jump on to the next bit. So I shall see you in the next bit. Okay guys, it is a few days later so it is time for the next bit. Now the legs are all finished. So I sanded them all up and I gave them a couple of coats of Danish oil. I did that off camera because you've seen me do that a million times and there's not much to explain there. Um, you can see the only straight how it sits in the top of the legs now. They're looking quite nice. The timber has kind of yellowed up nicely with the Danish oil so it re really matches the oak top and I just have some hard felt on the bottom just for the feet and it covers the screw holes. I actually plugged the screw holes as well so you can't actually see them anyway and then I've got some of that hard wearing felt that you get for putting on the end of the furniture, stuck it on the bottom so they're ready to go. Now the inserts have arrived so I've got some UJK, is it our U? Yeah, UJK threaded inserts. These are M6 ones, so hopefully these will work. I've put a couple into um, some of the oak. Get the camera to focus on that there, if it will. There we go, yeah, no, gone again. So I've put some um, into a sample piece of oak. They are really strong and they do get a really great grip. So we're gonna use these to hold on our uni strut now. So today's the day we assemble the table, let's do it. Okay guys, I have the table flipped over. I have my legs positioned to exactly where I want them. So I just marked all the corners. Now I'm pretty happy with that. I came in 120 mil, so I have 120 millimeters of an overhang both sides. Just um, positioned them to I think that's where it's gonna look the best. So I'm pretty happy with that. So that is where we're gonna be. So uh, now it's just a case of, if I lift these off, my uni shot stays exactly where it needs to be. There we go, that's those positioned. So now we shall mark these to exactly where I want my screw holes. Those two bars should help keep the table somewhat straight at the bottom. So there's our unistrut on top of the table. Now I know this is a little bit unorthodox, but it should help to keep the table flat. And this is slotted unistrut, so I will put the bolts through the slots and that should allow for a little bit of seasonal movement in the wood. It'll allow a small bit of slippage. Um, in my table top. So that should account for that and we should be good to go there. So I'm going to get the drill now and I have to drill these to the correct depth for all the inserts and we're going to get our inserts in. Now I have a couple that are going into the resin so I just want to be extra careful. So uh, yeah, let's just take our time and drill this. Okay guys, I have one in. They're a little bit tricky. I'm not overly impressed uh, with these UJK ones. They're a little bit on the soft side 
and they require a flathead screwdriver to put them in. I'll give you a look now in a second. There is ones available that you can use an Allen key to put them in and they are much, much better. These ones, once they come under pressure, you can start to widen out that slot for the flathead screwdriver, which is not good. So they take a 9.5 bit, you have to pre-drill with. When you get them in, I have one in, they do get a really strong grip and you get a really tight fasten with the bolt, which is good. But a little bit tricky, you have to be uh, very, very careful because you can bend, damage, twist the treads in it and then you'd have to re-tap them all. So I'm just using a bit of tight bond tree as a bit of lubricant and something just to set them in and hold them in with afterwards. It won't get a great grip on them, but it's acting as a bit of lubricant. And super glue is kind of going off um, a bit quick. So that seems to be doing the trick and that's helping them slot in a little bit easier. I'm also using this um, contraption. This just makes sure that your drill bit goes down at 90 degrees. I think I bought this from Axminster a few years ago. I think that's, that's where I got it. So if you're looking for something like this, they have them and it just, you can put this and set your drill up 90 degrees to any surface. So I'm gonna get on now and drill the rest of these. Um, Nice and easy, nice and slowly. I think I'm actually going to put six per uh, bracket just for that extra bit of strength and uh, we'll see how we go. So I get on, drill this and get these in now and um, yeah, I have to take my time because it's a little bit on the tricky side. Hey guys, there we are. Our first lot is in. Now they're spaced to line up with the slots on the uni strut. Certainly going into the resin is a lot harder than going into the timber. I didn't think that would be the case. I thought it might be the other way around. But uh, yeah, you want to be careful and make sure you're plenty lubricated. The wood glue actually really, really helps these things to go in. Again, they're not the strongest. I would definitely recommend getting the Allen key or Allen bolt type ones um, and make sure that they're steel and they're not just nickel or anything like that because nickel is very soft. Get steel ones. Um, I'm gonna to have to order in a bulk of these online, I say, because there's nowhere available around me that sells them. So these are the only ones I could get um, in Ireland, the eight mil ones or six mil ones with this flat head type um, screw. But uh, yeah, not great, not overly impressed with them, but they're in now. I'm gonna do the other side. Definitely the resin is that bit harder, so just be aware of that, guys. Um, make sure your drill hole is exact a little bit of lubrication going in and uh, yeah, take your time that you don't break them. So there we go. Now we can just screw in our first piece of uni strut. I'm gonna use some six mil nuts with a wide head. These are essentially gutter bolts or roofing bolts they're called. And we're gonna put a washer on them as well. So nice and easy. Okay guys, there we go, that's our first bar on in place. Everything's tightened down, that's good and solid and it actually has pulled the table flat. So I just gave you a little shot along the line there, you can see how flat the table is. So it actually is working. When I first put it on, it was a little bit of a cup in the middle, but cinching them down one by one has actually flattened that back out. So that's great, that's working. And it's on, it's good and solid and it's not going anywhere. So I'm gonna do the other one now exactly the same as that and then we'll attach the legs. Right guys, we're on to attaching the legs now. This is the beauty of the Unistrut. Not only should it keep our table flat, but you can fix anything you want to Unistrut. So these are eight mil spring nuts. Like I say, these are available in any size, six mil, eight mil, up to 12 mil. And all you gotta do is put them in and twist them and you can put them anywhere you want along this length. So you have full adjustment left to right, which is nice. So I'm just gonna just eyeball roughly where these need to be. So one roughly there, one roughly there. So we just get them in the ballpark and then we can put our legs on top and get our bolts through. And these are some eight mil bolts. They will just screw straight into that, like that. The bolt will pull the nut against the lip of the unistrut and you get a really, really strong um, fixing point. 
and it's fully adjustable too, which is nice. So there we go. So in your case, I drop this guy on top, line up our screw holes, and then we should be good to go. Okay, so now it's only a case to just get our bolts in. So nice and simple, they just go in. And we can start to tighten them home. Okay, there we go, our legs are on and boy are they rock solid. So there you go, Unistrut can be used in this application. To me, it seems like a great way of attaching legs, especially if you can hide the Unistrut within the frame of the legs. So if you're doing this style of legs, maybe this might be a good option for you guys. Get yourself a piece of Unistrut and bolt it on because it will help keep the table straight and give you a fixing point for your legs. And because you have so much movement left and right, it should allow the table to expand and contract. And if your screw holes are slightly off when you're drilling them, you have plenty of play there as well to make an adjustment and boy does it get a great grip. So there we go, using some Unistrut to fix table legs. That's probably a new one for most of us, a new one for me, but uh, it works. So hopefully you guys find that useful. Now the table is just done, exciting times. Okay guys, I've been busy. So I was about to just polish the top and I noticed it's starting to cup slightly again. Now right along here, all this section here where all the rot is, there's not actually much timber there. It's filled with resin, but it's the part that keeps moving the most. It's the joys, I suppose, of working with this type of wood with all this um, figure and rot and holes in it. It's not very stable. So I decided to put in the centerpiece. So I just went away and that piece that I messed up the angles on, I now use it for the centerpiece. So I put another piece of Unistrut in here and then we have the bowls and between the Unistrut and the oak, it has pulled this back straight again. So I had a nice a bit of a cup in it. So I screwed the Unistrut through it and then by screwing this center bolt in, I was able to pull that oak up so that's supporting it now and it's good and solid. So it's a good option. I couldn't route anything in, so I couldn't get C-channel and route it into that because there's not a lot to route into there. So it had to be a surface job and hide the steel. But I don't think it looks too bad and that's actually after adding a quite a bit of strength to the table. So now let's go and polish. Okay, hopefully you can see and it's not too much of a shine out. I'm just gonna use some of this Rustin's liquid wax. Now it just has carnauba wax in it. It's very similar to what you'd use on a car. Same kind of idea. It's just a wipe on, let it dry for a bit and then buff off to a nice shine. So let's get some of this on. We don't need a whole lot. Give that a few minutes to dry and then we'll buff it off. Quite nice stuff actually, it smells quite good. And really simple to use. Hey, let's buff it off. There we go guys, it is all finished up, all polished up now, and I have to say it looks absolutely stunning. I'm absolutely delighted with how this has turned out. It is my first um, really nice piece of furniture that I've ever made. I've learned a hell of a lot on this build, including how to use a miter saw properly, so that was quite hilarious. I've been sharing this on Instagram throughout the whole way, little backstories, little behind the scenes, so if you're on Instagram, make sure and give me a follow, I'll leave a link below. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this series, guys. Hopefully you've got something out of it. Hopefully you feel inspired to go try something like this yourselves. It's really not that difficult. It's a lot of work, but the resin is not um, that difficult. Don't be intimidated by it. It's actually keeping your live edge slab nice and flat is possibly the most difficult and challenging thing that I found. Everything else, once you just take your time and you're prepared, will go pretty easy. Follow the directions of the resin and it's not that hard to achieve this finish. Even to polish it back up and get it nice and clear again is not that difficult. Um, and the effect you can achieve with that copper 
a solid color and then using the pigment, the metallic pigment is absolutely beautiful. It turned out really, really well. I'm delighted with it and the see-through section as well, as you can see down into the table. Um, is absolutely stunning. Everybody who's come to look at it so far, they've all said it looks 10 times better in real life, and I have to say, guys, it does. It's very, very hard to capture um, what it actually looks like on the camera, but I hope I've done it justice, and yeah, you guys have got a good look, and you've been inspired by it. So if you have been, guys, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, hit like, any comments, any questions you have for me, be sure, leave them below. I just wanna thank the guys at MID Glass Fiber Supplies one more time, because they supplied me with everything I needed to make this build resin wise so definitely go check those guys out if you're in Ireland and you want to do a resin table build a river table coffee table bar top and um, turning pen blanks whatever all the resin stuff those guys can sort you out so it's glassfiber.ie I'll link it below they supplied me with all the gear it's what makes these uh, videos possible to fund these videos when companies come on board and help you out and make these projects and uh, hopefully guys you've enjoyed it and like I say hopefully you've been inspired by it so there we go. I'm going to set this up in my living room now and uh, maybe this weekend I'll have a beer. So you'll see a beer on a coaster, of course, and uh, I'll share all those pictures on Instagram. So if you're there, be sure and, and uh, hit me up on Instagram, guys. So yeah, I'm going to get out of here now. Hard work done, coffee table built. I'm over the moon at how it turned out. And uh, yeah, my first piece of furniture. So there we go. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take it easy.